it's a uh, i just want to know how many people here are for the first timer to listen to geshela oh quite a lot most welcome because this is uh, i would say one of the most wonderful moments of our life i remember geshela was doing 400 verses there's a verse in that which says that where there is the exponent of dharma where there is a flow of dharma and where there are the listeners that moment is precious like the udambra flower i think udambra flower they say blooms after 1000 years so i think we are all having that great moment at this value it nourish it and enjoy this having said so i am reminded how many of you have heard the name chiknathan wonderful he came to in india in 2008 and we organized this teaching almost for 40 days and one of the visits the last of his teaching was in nalanda and we all stayed in the military campus it was very compulsory that everyone has to write the name like we, when we go to the hotel so he also has to write his name and the address he wrote his name and then in the address column he wrote here and now so during this period of staying here in deer park can we make here and now as our address i think that would be really one of the most wonderful moments so to give this here and moment or bring us to here and now moment and to relish that wonderful moment of dharma we have geshela here i think it's a very precious i would have never liked to read this biography because i find that this description is not the describe as we find geshela those of us who have been listening to him attending his teachings i think that is the best introduction but since some of you are new i think i'll read though it may don't bring that personality of geshela very clearly venerable geshe dorje damdol is presently director at tiber house new delhi cultural center of his holiness the dalai lama in 1988 geshela joined the institute of buddhist dialectics dharamshala for formal studies in buddhist logic philosophy and epistemology after 15 years of study in buddhist philosophy he finished his geshe larampa degree which is the phd in 2002 from drepung losling monastic university he joined gyume tantric college for a year for tantric studies he is appointed as the official translator to his holiness the dalai lama since 2005 He has been serving as the interpreter of His Holiness the Dalai Lama for so many years, and at the same time involved in doing written translation of many texts from Tibetan into English, such as Arya Nagarjuna's Mula Madhya Karika, Fundamental Wisdom of the Middle Way, Acharya Shanti Deva's Bodhicharya Aptara Wisdom Chapter. He was appointed as the director of Tibet House Cultural Center of His Holiness. the dalai lama new delhi in march 2011 while assigned with the responsibility of the directorship of tibet house the cultural center of his holiness the dalai lama new delhi india he also gives regular lectures in tibet house and many other places like universities and the institute 
He also travels widely within India and abroad. I think which, I, which would be difficult to really name all the countries, but I think widely travels, widely disseminates the Dharma. And uh, some of us who, atten, who have been attending, we know that more than 5,000 5, students are presently uh, students of Geshe-la, and it spreads almost over 65 countries. I think he is like a, you can, we can say, spiritual ambassador. I think uh, the government of India and the Tibet government should be very, very grateful bringing that linkage. Yeah. So this is what Geshe Lars, and I'm not really going to read a lot of contribution that he has really made some of the books, some of his association with some of the best professors in the world, like uh, Zellinger, the Paul Ekman, all this. I think one can really talk that outside the uh, retreat or maybe informally when we sit together. What I really find very interesting, in fact, uh, I was reading a book by uh, Zongsa Rinpoche, and uh, there is the story of uh, 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 Vasubandhu. Two of the great students of uh, Vasubandhu, one is Nignak, and another one is the Sitharmati. They became as prominent as he was. I mean, the teacher, the Vasubandhu. The enthusiasm and the passion with which Geshe La really teaches, sometimes I find that he really wants to his students more, if equal to him, sometimes more than what, as if he's infusing his, this dharma in the DNA of everyone so that this dharma really flows in their blood. Well, I think, uh, I would really say that Deer Park has been very fortunate that Geshe-la has been coming here. I really don't know how many years now. 14 years. Yeah, I think uh, 16 years. OK. <laughs> OK. <laughs> so Sonam La says that the 16 years, which is, I think, very wonderful. And uh, really thankful, Geshe-la. I think. Uh, you have been very compassionate. I think whenever we approached him, I don't remember he said the no. Oh, yes. Yes. I think uh, we really value that because your presence really makes a very different ambience in this, in this hall. So with that, I think may I request Diwanji, who is the director here, to formally offer a kata from all of us. So, with that, I think Dio Park would be failing if we don't really be saying thanks to all the participants who have really come. I think uh, we try to create this space so that all of you could come, feel this, and whatever best facility and the ambience that we can create, we offer that to you. And uh, just to make a mention that, I think uh, before COVID, we had almost 5,000 people coming annually here for the different retreats. Of course, COVID affected, but now we are really picking up. And uh, secondly, we are very grateful to Tibet House, who has sponsored some students, uh, Flowering Dharma, who has been taking very active. And uh, because of that, I think number of the Indian participants has really been going on. Because our Zongsa Rimoche said that we really need to get more and more Indians so that 
they get benefited from this lineage of dharma which has come from this land. When we started in 2006, I remember we were only four or five Indians. Today, at least the ratio has gone very high. So we are really thankful to all the participants who have really come here. So with that, may I request Geshe to turn the wheel of dharma as Sonamla has said. Thank you, Gashila. Uh, thank you, Ajirji. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you, Srinitanrula. Srinitanrula here. We have two Srinitanrulas, one here, one IT staff there, Tibet House. The director of Tia Park, Srinitanrula Divan. Ji, thank you so much. And uh, the I know that all of you identify Pravinji, who not only knows your name, knows your surname very precisely. <laughs> it is amazing. So all these many years you've been working so hard for Deer Park. That's amazing. Thank you so much. And everybody loves you. I know that. And Rajinderji, the moment you see him, since he was 13 years old, so now a young man, and he is again another attraction of Deer Park. Amazing. So loving, caring, embracing. And who used to do the paragliding. And suddenly he stopped that for another reason. Okay, that's a different story. <laughs> okay, so the um, so basically I see that there are many seniors who came here. Many seniors, seniors, many seniors, not in age, in terms of, for example, a Sonamla like he identified precisely 14 years since he came here. 14 years, almost like every year he comes twice, three times. And the immigration, Indian immigration, they're wondering why this person's <laughs> coming. And he was interrogated. Why are you coming so far? Are you doing any business? So this was the problem that, and the, it has been amazing, a great journey, all these 14 years. And then he could, the, from his calculation, he could see that two years before he's joining here, which means 16 years. Okay, and I see that many seniors here, for example, like from Singapore, and here we have Dr. Nibidiriji, the many of the seniors, and Magla here. Magla, when did you come? Okay, Magla said there are many here, and Dr. the, the Mr. TBO, there are, and many are there, many seniors are there. And the Kate, Omar, so many seniors. So the, in a way, I'm just wondering, why the seniors, they came? This question, is it to support me? Because that the, now with age, naturally, you know, one can feel more tired. So if they are with me, then the younger ones, they can bombard me with questions, then they will, they'll stop. They'll give the answers to you. Okay, so what I'm saying is that there are many seniors. And um, meanwhile, the, this program is primarily uh, focused on the youngsters, newcomers. At the same time, yes, the seniors, the, they can really help the newcomers. Um, they, and I'm going to quickly explain to you what we're going to do from tomorrow morning. Of course, today we have one more class, and then the um, afternoon we have 3.30, we have the Tibet House class, Nalanda Diploma course. And anybody in Nalanda Diploma course batch five, must be there must be some of you who join Nalanda Diploma course. Um, There's going to be online, online meaning that the people rest of the world, they listen to it online, and others here, feel free to join us if you have time then you can join us even if even though you may not be a part of the ndc5 not in the because don't worry just join us if you like if you like and if you have time you can join us so it's going to happen here at 3 30 and in the evening it's going to be a little technical text not at the master's course batch two 
is little technical. So on uh, those who are, if you want to know what is meant by technical, then you can come. And whereas if you know what is technical, I'm already tired of quantum physics, relativity theory, and so forth, this is very technical. Then you know what technical means, then you may not come. Whereas NMC2, the students, if you are the if you have time again evening at six o'clock with the class, um, you join. And from tomorrow, they the as the Bravinci rightly the ex, the ex, explained and announced that the our the timetable set thus far is prone to change, subject to change depending on the uh, diverse classes, and uh, but the changes are going to be so minimal for the reason that the classes except for the Sundays the classes happen in the evening at six o'clock which will not disrupt the course here. Then the or the next point which I like to also share with you is that from tomorrow from tomorrow as always from tomorrow unless specified uh, tomorrow morning at 5.45 So basically, it says six to eight, but actually, it's five forty-five. Five forty-five report here for the morning practice. And the um, earlier, when I was in my thirties, my energy was just amazing. Just I don't know what is what is meant by tiredness, but now I could feel it. But uh, still, the morning sessions is extremely important for the reason that that this why we are doing the morning practice is between one and a half hours to two hours, and the why we are doing this is primarily for the newcomers to learn, because that after these retreats, oftentimes uh, people ask me, I say, okay, so this now give me a different way of looking at things, new perspective of the world, of myself, my life. Now how to follow up with this, how to continue with this practice, what you do on a daily basis, and what centers to go to, all these questions come up. So the morning practice which we do here, this is primarily to help the newcomers design your own daily practice daily practice, not that you become a Buddhist. This is not at all, this should not be the reason. And it should be for you to become a happier and happier person. For example, you want to become a happier person as a physicist, you have to learn physics more and more. And if you want to become a happy person in the community, in your family, in your workplace, wherever you are, then we have to learn, we have to practice it on a daily basis how to be happy. And how to be happy is not like be happy. This is not the idea. The idea is that if you learn over the next 10 days how the, say, the cognitive aspect of mind needs to be activated to affect your effective element of your mind, and which decides your peace of mind. Finally, what decides your peace of mind is not the cognitive. Is your affective mind which decides whether you are peace, disturbed, and so forth. And this affective mind that's going to be determined by the cognitive. So the cognitive mind plays a very important role, and we need to learn how to bring about change in your cognitive thinking so the affective thinking can be transformed naturally, which will then decide your peace of mind and your peace of mind not only for yourself creating a peace peaceful environment for your family and wherever you are for example over the the next 10 days you will come to meet with Ajirji and many of the seniors here my friends here and uh, when you meet them you could feel something that there's something there in these and the the people who have been in Rudama for long you could feel that and whereas if you if you're with somebody who has in, been Dharma for so long and no this is then no, there's nothing to look at this person so not so matured you know but not so so impressive if this is the impression that you get, just imagine if the person did not come in contact with the Dharma. 
it could be just horrible. You're getting it? So you should be feeling so happy that I'm meeting this person from 5% to 10%. It's amazing. You're getting it? Okay, why well, I'm sharing this, this is very important. Finally, coming to these retreats, uh, the not only this retreat, any retreat that you do engage with any other programs. For example, like recently, uh, Dr. Nivedarji did a retreat here, conducted a retreat here. And the, so the purpose, what's the purpose is that as you grow older, as we grow older, I grow older, you grow older, we should become happier and happier and happy person. If that happens, um, these retreats prove to be meaningful. And whereas if the, if you become, let's say as you grow older and older, um, you tend to miss your youth. The more and more old you become, the more you miss your youth, which means that you have used your life not in a productive way so uh, this is something that we need to remember and why i'm saying this is that th the progress is very important as long as the progress are happening and uh, who decides whether you're progressing one the best judge is yourself and the second is people who are very immediate to you who are an immediate circle of yours like your parents like your brother sister and people around you who know you so well these people will tell you whether you these people know whether you whether you are whether you are progressing so progress is very important it's not that you should say the 10 days and then the next day you become a divine you know the power the divine person no don't expect that the thing is that progress should be the air you should become a more sensible person more say the the say less hyper more sensible more compassionate and that too, not within the span of 10 days, years and years, as, it, as his holiness the Dalai always says, then don't expect the changes within a day or a week or a month's time. But of course, we have to expect change, the changes within the span of the years, five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. Okay. So, um, so morning session is going to be very important and uh, this will just teach us from this we learn how we can design our own practice to make sure that you're growing on a daily basis this is like taking the medication the antibiotics for tuberculosis is there any doctors nurses recents doctors nurses doctors nurses okay doctor here okay hand up good Dr. Padma. Anyone else? Doctors, nurses? Okay, we have one doctor here. Where? Nurse over there. Yes, a nurse there, a doctor here. So what I'm saying is that the, the doctors and nurses, they know the best. That if you're suffering from tuberculosis, don't expect to take the, anti, anti, the antibiotics for one day and then the expecting to recover fully. No, it's not possible. So minimum you have to take how long? Minimum six months you have to take. And that too, every day, every day, for two months, oh, very precise, okay. Okay, doctor. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so if you want to learn more details, the doctor is here. You're, so what I would say is that on a daily basis, on a daily basis, we need to take the antibiotics. Daily basis. Okay, likewise, this daily, pra daily basis, the practice, daily practice, which you are, we, are, we are all expected to do. If not that you have to do it because of this retreat. No, if you want happiness, if you don't want miseries. And who's that person resents? Who want happiness, who don't want miseries? Are you serious? Raise your hands, those who are serious. If you're serious, you have to do this. No choice. If you want to get away from tuberculosis, you have to take the antibiotics for the next six months. So this is what we should be doing. Okay, this is one thing. Then the next important thing is, Okay, so mornings. By the way, this book will be with you. Uh, the what that you have, I'm not too sure. Okay, what I'm saying, this book. On uh, this book, earlier there used to be a very generous couple from Singapore, uh, brother Elvin and sister Kristen, Christy Kristen, so sister Christy. 
two of them have been offering this book published by Tibet House, but they are sponsoring this book to be distributed to the retreatants like you. Anybody who attends these retreats, um, they distribute this book for free. They, in other words, they uh, support the sponsorship. And I'm sure that some of you have, might have six of these books with you now. Six or seven books. <laughs> You're getting it. I'm sure some of you have. You left it at your home and come here. Oh, Alvin, Sister Christy, you know, book will come. <laughs> right? I'm sure you. some of you have six of them. Six, seven, if not seven, eight. Right? Okay. So, um, this book will be, should be with you the whole day. Morning, of course. Practice will be based on this book. And even the whole teachings it will be done or this the sutra, which will be included in this book. And how this book came to being, this is also a very important thing. Don't think that this is really available on Amazon. You will not get it. You will not get it on Amazon anywhere. It's published by Tibet House. And it took, took me and took us about 20 years to bring this book. So initially in the same here, Deer Park, it was a tin book. Now it keeps expanding. It became fatter, fatter, fatter. Now this is the almost the, the final version of this book. Uh, so this book is very precious, and people who are into Dharma for the last 20, 30 years, when they see this book, they just f say that this is the book that we have been the wishing for the last 20, 30 years. Finally, we got it. And you will also feel the same thing later on. So what is important then? Thing that you want to learn, you read this book, you see that it's included, it's just already included in this book. Okay, this is one thing. And then for the food offerings and so forth, so all will be Ajirji, Sonamla, they are all the seniors here uh, who know the how we do this. So, um, food offerings and so forth will be done according to how we conduct the, how we conducted the early retreats. Then the next point, very important, is the group discussion. And if you look at the timetable, we see that there are two compulsory group discussions and one optional group discussion. Um, the, for the two compulsory group discussions, uh, we have the identified um, some group leaders or we call them moderators. And it's not that <clears throat> the moderators are somebody very special, but moderators, they know the retreat. They know the retreat. They, conduct, they took part in this retreat for several times because of which they know so the format, they know so well. And the initially for the maybe maybe for the first two days, they will be they will coordinate the respective groups and do for the group discussion. And then later on by the time third day, fourth day, then people go by rotation. Everybody will get the chance to be the moderator. And what we suggest is that the, when I say to moderate, to moderate the group discussion, the, um, just see how the seniors, which means who are already identified, just see how they do the, the, this, the, the moderator work. And in other words, the idea is that as the, Many of the participants with a new group, maximum is going to be like 10, 10 members in one group. So as many get the opportunity to speak, to share their thoughts, to give the answers, to throw questions. It's not just one person dominates, one or two person dominate, dominate the whole session, one group session. Uh, so but the, this one thing. And particularly, I would say the the seniors, seniors meaning those who have been attending these retreats for the last and the many years, many times, I would suggest you not to dominate the group discussion. Instead, you listen, and the newcomers let them speak. Let them speak, and newcomers don't dominate. Don't think they're okay now, Gishila, you know, they silence all the seniors, so now we can, we can dominate. So the thing is that whatever question that you have, whatever, don't feel hesitant, whatever, just bring this up. Don't feel, no need to feel say, shy or nervous. Just bring this up and then the seniors see, you just brainstorm, give the answers. And if you're not happy with the answer, again, you throw your next question. And so this is how we have to keep growing. 
And then where the some of the questions can be very complicated, even the questions coming from the newcomers can be extremely good questions. And if you're not happy with the answers coming from your group, I bring them on my table, right? On my table. And then it's not that I have the answers. If it comes from my kid table, I share with the group and everybody will get the chance to hear your question. That is important. It's not that the everything should be decided in these 10 days. Even the Buddha remained, 10 days is nothing. Buddha remained 49 days silence. Saying that this teaching which the Buddha taught, Salisthamba Sutra, Raisirin Sutra, is very sophisticated. So therefore he could not find anybody who can understand this. So he remained silent for 49 days. So 10 days is nothing. So what I'm saying is that group discussion is extremely important. And if there are some who have health issues, health issues, you need more rest, and then they say one or two, one or two, there can be exceptions that the you can the say take more time for you for yourself, rest. Otherwise, the majority of us, there's no reason why we have to skip the group discussions. This is very important. Even the morning sessions, morning sessions, some of the seniors, some of the seniors, they have their own many commitments, many hours of commitments. So I would say that the seniors don't force yourself to come to the morning sessions. Um, the, so you have your personal practice to be done, many commitments, sadhanas and so forth. So don't force yourself to come in the morning sessions. Mornings are primarily for the uh, the newcomers. Newcomers, the to learn what is your practice, and then to learn, I can learn it with, in two days. Don't think like this, because the, the more the number of days, the more you get used to it. Get used to it, and you get the uh, complete picture of the, what the practice is like. Okay, so with this in mind, we see that there are many young faces. So we have here Gisha Samdrubla, who, who is the director of the Florian Dharma, um, the youth, the association from Ladakh, and uh, with him there are the 16 of you youngsters, and then the that the Florian Dharma actually sponsored the 16 of them for the participation, the sponsored meaning the the scholarships given uh, for this retreat for the 16 of them, and then at the Tibet House usually we offer scholarships to the uh, students, 75% scholarship given, and then Deer Park. Deer Park also for the students, and they give some percentage of the scholarship for the day stay, meaning the accommodation. So, um, the particularly the Gisha Samdula, the taking the responsibility of this Flying Dharma Youth Group, which is extremely important. A great inspiration to so many youngsters. Then, before I plunge into the main topic today, is that the um, this this course, uh, His Holiness the Dalai Lama, on the one instruction that His Holiness gives to the Bad House and then any Buddhist center, is that don't think of conversion. Conversion should not be happening. You should not have a sense of, you. the centers should not have the ultimate motive for conversion. Centers, the job of the centers is to spread happiness, spread common sense, spread compassion. And it is not for to create more problems in the community. So the and people who admire, for example, attending this 10-day retreat, and then you may be, you know, from other religious groups or any ethnicity, the from other different groups, and you feel you admire this, for example, like the the, the teachings of Buddha, that there's no contradiction that you're admiring this teaching at the same time creating harmony in your family family with different religious groups, religious traditions, or ethnicity, social backgrounds. There should be no reason why you should bring conflicts in them. 
So, for example, say the religion is more like personal practice. What we're doing is something universal. Is something universal? Okay. Indrajiji. Okay, the chair is there. Yes, good. So with this, the, the let us keep in mind that the um, no matter what, how however much you may admire the teachings of Buddha through exposure to these concepts, no blind faith, it's all rational thinking, very realistic, practical. At the same time, let us make it a point that uh, the it should have the it should have the the benefit. It should the benefit of creating more harmony in the family rather than disrupting the family from the harmony. Meaning that you go back home and then the, you say, the, what is the, this blind faith, this ritual, this blind faith ritual. Instead of that, you take, take part in this. Take, for example, like the, say, the mothers, how they do, behave like a mother. How the mothers do. The child holds a teddy bear, the mother also holds a teddy bear. And without the child, if the mother is holding a teddy bear all the time, this is stupid. You agree? Mother holding a teddy bear like this, this is too much. Yeah, but for the child, to make the child happy, child holds a teddy bear, mother also holds a teddy bear. And child sketches, the mother also sketches. Just to comply with the child, to let the, feel, to let the child feel that the mother is with you. So likewise, that the, we should demonstrate that we are grown up like mothers who are way more mature in comparison with the small children. So what the other people are doing, don't disrupt them, don't disrespect them. So if, particularly if that is your family, take part in what they're doing, rituals and so forth, take part. Let them feel that, wow, that's amazing. She went to the, the Buddhist retreat, coming back, she's fully with one's own culture. That's amazing. Just don't disrupt the family. So, so this is the message. The idea is not for you, not for somebody to become Buddhist, but somebody to become a happier person, more sensible person, more compassionate person, somebody who can spread, share this compassion and the wisdom, the intelligence that you've learned with the people around you so that others also become more sensible person, more compassionate person who does not have to believe in wrath, who doesn't be, have to believe in conflicts, fights and so forth, instead who believes in dialogue and harmony. So that should be the main message. So this is all the advice and the message and the, the instructions coming from His Holiness the Dalai Lama that the world should be felt as one entity, as one family. Okay. Having said this, the we are together, we'll be here uh, together for like 10 days and the, um, the teachings at times can be a little technical. At the same time, if it's too technical, then the, the the newcomers may get a little lost, so therefore the we have to you have to help me. But the the elder the seniors, not elders, seniors, seniors in terms of your say the exposure to this these teachings, you should help me in ways that the so during the group discussions you rather the stay there and then the give answers to the the questions coming from the on the from others and also if somebody can articulate their question you help to articulate the question don't say that okay what are you asking is this i'm just wondering if this is what you mean to ask correct me if i'm wrong with this expression of humility this is very important and don't let the newcomers feel intimidated right being very what authoritative and the what dominating or oh, this is your question you don't know how to ask questions. So this is your question. Right? Yeah, this is a question. So this should not happen. You're getting it? Say the, um, particularly somebody is trying to express something. Don't silence. Let the person speak more. Saying that, oh, your question is very interesting. Is this what you mean to ask? Correct me if I'm wrong. So let inspire others inspire others to speak. Okay. 
But then we never know. On the fifth day, sixth day, seventh day, newcomers may have more brilliant, brilliant questions or answers than the seniors. We never know. You're getting it, okay? Uh, but the point is that the um, the group discussion is very important, and then the evening group, the third group discussion that is optional. That is optional, uh, which means that the, the third group discussion will all will happen here. All meaning it's just one group. The uh, the first two group discussions most likely split into ten, ah, uh, ten groups. Nine or ten, yes, nine or ten, and the um, okay. So the um, this is the the basic framework, and the meanwhile, um. Any questions that you might have, any questions, just bring them up in the group discussions or otherwise as well. And then the, the whole class will be more in an interactive style. Once in a while, I'll, I, I, I ask questions to you and when things are not too clear to you, you can also raise your hands, interrupt me. So this is the, the style of our, the, the, the teachings and Okay, so with this in mind, um, uh, finally, first of all, we need to keep in mind that the why we are here, what for? So to learn something, to learn something, and to learn what? This question: to learn for what purpose? Learn something for what purpose? Again, we need. We should not forget that the purpose this is very important. And uh, the and some of you may be able to articulate it more precisely. That the that was the purpose of life. I learned to learn. Was the purpose of life? That His Holiness the Dalai Lama. His Holiness, two thousand eight. Um, when invited to give a public address in Delhi University. Uh, after the address, as usual, during the end, end question answer session, one young girl stood up to ask a question Your Holiness, what is the purpose of life? Okay, how many of you had the same question raise your hands? In your, in your life, what, the same question What's the purpose of life? Okay. So some young people, they're very happy. This is the question, yes. I'm so glad that this question was actually brought to his holiness already, right? Okay, uh, I'm glad that to see the smile on the face. Okay, so his holiness, without a second thought, his own said that we live on hope and we hope for happiness. Let me repeat it. Nobody hopes for miseries. Nobody hopes for anger. Today I'm so excited. This evening, I'm going to have a fight with this person. You know, I'm so excited. No, nobody looks look, looks forward to such a fights, conflicts, anger, and so forth. So the purpose of His Holiness, according to His Holiness, the purpose of life, according to His Holiness, is that we live in hope and we for hope for happiness. So His Holiness concluded by saying, the genuine happiness is the purpose of life. And genuine happiness. And some of you may be wondering, what is happiness? It's a very fluid concept, right? People define it differently. Okay, so this is what we're going to learn. And some people, they, they would just outright say that no, nobody can decide what happiness is, right? So you already decided nobody can decide it. You understand it? You already decided that nobody can decide it. So you are the one who decided. So this is again too much. So first, wise person will never take any decisions. Wise person will be wise in ways to listen to the views of others. Listen to the views. Listen doesn't mean you have to accept it. Listen doesn't mean you have to reject it. You can listen. Listen and you will get ideas. And these ideas, do you agree? Agree with? You, or you don't agree with? It's your choice. If it resonates with your thinking, you accept it. If it doesn't resonate with your thinking, reject it. What's the problem? What's the problem with listening to the problem? Listening to the different ideas. Listen, 
be open-minded, listen to the ideas, and don't be quick to reject, don't be quick to accept. This is a very important point. In other words, what is encouraged is use your common sense. And even the common sense, we're not sure if you have a common sense. So some doctors will say that common sense is not so common. Right? Common sense is not so common. So the point is that the, sometimes we're so quick to say that it doesn't make any sense. Nagarjuna, he said, nothing is, nothing exists. It doesn't make any sense. This is too quick a conclusion that you're drawing. You're getting it? The brilliant, brilliant, brilliant genius minds, they take 20, 30, 40 years to experience goosebumps on the body just to read one line of Arya Nagarjuna. And how somebody who's too naive, just reading Arya Nagarjuna's text once, conclude that this is nihilist, this is idealist. So let us not be unwise, let us be wise. Wise in listening, listen to the ideas, not be quick to accept, not be quick to reject. You're getting it? In other words, you give yourself time. Whatever you have learned, subject this to analysis and to see if it makes sense. Finally, if it resonates so well with your thinking. For example, usually what I say is that the, the, which is better? Is there any IT staff, raise hands, IT, from IT background, computer science background? One over there, anyone? Okay. Okay, no one. Only one. Okay, two over there. Okay, so the two, two of them can tell us. Say. Okay. Computer soft, softwares. Computer softwares, which is more sophisticated software that we have today versus the software that we had 20 years ago? Huh? Everybody can say this, right? As long as you know, you have some idea what software, software means. Jimela, tell me, which is more sophisticated? Today's or 20 years ago? Huh? 20 years ago. <laughs> Uh, today, Jimmy was smart. When people started laughing, when he said 20 years ago, right, he changed the position. <laughs> right? That's a smart move. <laughs> okay, Tenzi Ngsela, tell me. Today, today, of course. Now, just imagine. Tenzi Ngsela is saying, Ben La, Ben is saying, is that today's software is much, much more sophisticated. But, I have a laptop which, which I owned since 20 years ago. And to this software, it does not, it does not operate. But the, the 20 years ago software, as Jigmela said, it works so well with my laptop. How come that today's one is better? Early one works so well, right? It operates and to this, it does not even read what is the, the, the it can be read on this laptop. So what's the problem? So Jigmela is more correct than Tenzing Sela. Anyone who has to comment on this? Quick, quick. Anyone who has to comment on this? Yes, okay. Configuration, in what ways? Or not with all run? Why? So what we have to do is more sophisticated. It, it requires a very sophisticated device. Okay, and the Tenzing Sela, we agree with Tenzing Injela. So in other words, same, it's not problem of the today's software, it's the problem of the hardware. Hardware is outdated. You're getting it? So you need outdated softwares, not the Current softwares. You're getting it? So, if you want the current software, sophisticated softwares to operate on your laptop, what should you do? 
upgrade your laptop. You're getting it? So very sophisticated concepts will come to you. You may not understand it. You have to upgrade your hardware of the intelligence. That needs to upgrade it. Don't say that, oh, I don't agree. This it doesn't make any sense. Which means that your software may be, your hardware may be too old, too outdated. You're getting it? It needs to be upgraded. Your thinking, your intelligence could need to be upgraded. And then the today's very sophisticated software, Ara Nigarjuna, if it operates so well. You're getting it? So in other words, let us not be quick. We learn things. Let us not be quick to reject. Let us not quick. Let us not be quick to accept. And this is This is the, the favorite statement of Deshen, right? From the last retreat. <laughs> what is your favorite statement? Learn it, don't be quick to reject, don't be quick to accept. So this is a favorite statement. Okay, she's doing philosophy, PhD in philosophy from BSU. Okay. So the, this is one thing that we need to remember. So having said that, what I'm saying, what's the purpose of life? Purpose of life, his holiness so beautifully encapsulated in just two lines. We live in hope and we hope for happiness. So the conclusion is the genuine happiness in, is your purpose of life. And some people may, may not agree with the, what is happiness? Is a very, say, it can be, be very ambiguous. There's ambiguity there in what happiness is. But the thing is that if you learn more deeper into this, then you will be fascinated. These two lines of His Holiness can be easily understood by the ordinary people like us and can be very sophisticated and understood by the brilliant minds in the best of the sophistications. Okay, so the purpose of life is what? Is, from what we learned thus far, is, is a genuine happiness. Genuine happiness is the purpose of life. But don't be quick to accept it, don't be quick to reject it. Okay. So with this mind, our approach, in other words, our approach should be, when I say that don't be quick to reject, don't be quick to accept, which means that our approach should be analytical. Our approach should be rational. Our approach should be realistic. From this, at least from this 10-day retreat, we're going to learn how to tilt more and more towards becoming more rational, more common sense-based person, and more pragmatic and more realistic rather than expecting, creating, waiting for some illusory uh, the expectations, illusory, you say, the, the results with totally uh, the incoherent causes. Instead of that, expecting some the results on the basis of the coherent causes which are, which are concomitant with the results. So that is what we should uh, try to turn towards to become. Okay. So if that is the case, the question the next question is the genuine happiness. Genuine happiness can be like okay in degree it can vary in degrees. You agree? You agree? Say for example, say you are happy, you can be 10% happy, 20% happy, 50% happy. You agree? You agree? Okay, if you agree with this then the next question is that if somebody were to tell you what degree of happiness do you want, what's your answer? 100%. And there's some of you, what is this? 100% happiness is not possible. How many things like this resents? Be very honest. Yes, the girl over there resents, resents. I know there are many, you know, 100% happiness, not really, they are just very idealistic. Right, hundred percent. What is this so idealistic? Right. Okay. So the question is again: Let us not be quick to say that hundred percent happiness is possible, not possible. Let us not be quick to say that. The question is that in case, in case if there is if there is hundred percent happiness, how many you would be happy to go for it? If it does exist, 
how many you, you would be happy to go for it. Okay, and how many you prefer to have better, like 90%? 90%, so 10% to appreciate the happy 90% happiness. If everything is happy, then there's no fun, right? Raise hands, those things like this, yes. Okay, raise hands, raise hands. Okay. Ajirji, please identify these people, raise hands. One over there, raise hands. Okay, now many hands dropped. <laughs> Hey, raise your hands. Those who that that ten percent, ninety percent is good. Ten, not hundred percent. Ten percent suffering is good to have ten percent, so that I will appreciate the ninety percent happiness. Raise hands. Raise hands. Raise hands, including this Shigila. Raise hands. Okay, Ajirji. Now look, Ajirji already took the photograph of you, right? Why? From tomorrow, morning breakfast cut for all of you. Those people who raise hand, because 10% suffering you want, right? 10% suffering you want, 10% morning, no breakfast. And then why no breakfast, no human rights, right? <laughs> right? No, you want 10% suffering, there is 10% suffering, right? 50%, 50% lunch, 40% dinner, 10% breakfast. So that is cut, to appreciate your 50% and 40% lunch and and dinner, to appreciate that, 10% cut. Then morning, you look at, you just with your, in the class, you come with your face dropped, right? So whereas if there's a joy in you, 10% no breakfast, wow, happy, then what you said is very true. What you, what you said is coming from your heart. Otherwise, you, morning breakfast cut, your, your face dropped, which means that you are not genuine. What you said is not true. What you say something and you deep inside you, you're something different. You're getting it? So we should try to be, try to articulate what's within you and say this. Real philosophy is somebody who learns something and who is able to resonate well with what you think. Your thought processes must be reflected and then meanwhile keep growing. That is a real philosophy. So these people, for example, like even for the past, not in the masters. Of course, for them, these brilliant philosophical thoughts, they really resonate with the belief system. For example, like the David Hume, Western philosophers, even the classical Indian philosophers, like classical non-Buddhist Indian philosophers, what they say, very sophisticated concepts, they believe in these concepts. They believe in these concepts. And the, it's not that they say something and they, you know, they feel something. No, they believe in. It. So these people will shine in their philosophical standpoints. Okay. So uh, the next question is: next question is whether or not hundred percent happiness is possible. This is the first question, right? Let's not the, say take for granted that hundred percent happiness is possible. Let us not start with the presupposition. The question is that whether or not 100% happiness is possible. The first question. If yes, if yes, next question is how to attain that? How to, how to attain, how to achieve this 100% happiness? You're getting it? And then there's, and there's still the, say, more the little say the, the questions, sublim the sublimated questions would be like, what exactly is happiness? What exactly is happiness? All these, and you can put into questions, you can bring them up, and don't expect that you'll get the answer within one minute. You're getting a minute of these questions, you contemplate, you contemplate on this, you may not get the answer. Even if Arinagarjuna comes, even if Buddha comes, give the answer, they, you may not really you say the you feel wow that's amazing you will not feel it not not because the buddha's answer is incomplete because no uh, because your hardware needs to be upgraded you're getting it so till that point that even if it's a buddha to give you the answer you will not feel resonating that well with your thoughts so we need to be upgraded okay so how to upgrade your intelligence and some of you may think that, oh, now look, again, 
I thought that this is going to be a very beautiful session, right? Gisha Samdula, Ajirji, you know. So, but then now he's talking about intelligence. In my school, I just uh, say the physics, hopeless, mathematics, hopeless. And now he's again talking about intelligence. Wherever I go, there's no room for us. There's no place for us. No. Even your intelligence can be, can be upgraded. Uh, even that can be upgraded. Don't, nobody can fail you. Particularly those people who think that I, I was not doing well in the school. Mathematics, physics, where intelligence required, where IQ is involved. I'm not good at it. And then you think that, okay, now I'm hopeless. If this is what you're doing, you are doing the biggest of the disservice to yourself. Let me repeat it. Nobody can fail you. Only you can fail yourself. Nobody can fail you. Nobody can. Even if a thousand people come to tell you that you are a hopeless person, your IQ is so low, only 10 or only 20 and so forth, nobody can fail you. Only you can fail you. When you say that, I'm hopeless. I can't do it. Then this is the greatest of failure. Even if thousands of people say that you're hopeless, you also have the seed of perfection within you. Seed of perfection, perfection of wisdom, intelligence, perfection of potential, power, a potential, the power, the, the, the perfection of compassion. Each one of us, however insignificant you think you are, we all have the seed of these three perfections. Perfect love, Perfect, perfect power and perfect knowledge. Perfect knowledge, intelligence, wisdom. We all have these three, the seeds within us. So our job is to just retrieve, retrieve these seeds and then your intelligence keep growing. You see that you are actually growing in your intelligence. And how I can say this is that today, believe it or not, 2024, in the October, what date? 6th? Six. 6th Six October 2024. And say like after five years, not, you, know, you don't even have, to, even have to wait for five years. After two years, three years, five years, being consistent with these style of teachings, like the study of the psychology, study of philosophy to really activate your intelligence. Within the span of two, three, four years' time, you can see that you have actually grown. Your intelligence actually sharpened. It's sharpened a lot. How? When you come to the same retreat after two years, three years, four years, you will see yourself as included in the seniors. Right? And the thoughts which are shared you say, yeah, I already know this. I already know this. And the, the newcomers, when they say something, they even don't know this. Right? You actually the one, ten years, five years ago, you were the one who did not know this. Now you know this already, which means that it requires intelligence. Now you have developed that intelligence to accommodate these sophisticated concepts. I've actually seen that in my own life. Like 20 years ago, the, Almost like 25 years ago, I've seen that. And then more recently, the last 10 years, I've seen that with the people who are once almost like, almost like hopeless in understanding the sophisticated philosophical thoughts. And after several years, they're really shining. But it requires two things. Number one, never giving up. Number two, consistency. Number one, never giving up. Number two, consistency. If, do, if these two things are there within you, 100%, you see that your intelligence is being sharpened. And you will understand the, the, the concepts very sophisticatedly. And you see that you're actually growing. Okay. <clears throat> so the question is, what we said is that whether or not the 100% happiness is possible. This is another question. Then the, if the answer is yes, 100% happiness is possible, then the next question is, next question is, uh, how to attain this 100% happiness? This is the next question. 
and again keep in mind that all these don't feel and don't feel that okay if i ask this question this can be very they can be very offensive it can be blasphem blasphemous right to ask this question because the the in buddhism everybody has the potential to become buddha potential to become the say the the full awakened have the maximum happiness and then if i ask this question how do you know it can be very blasphemous it can be what what's the other words blasphemous and what huh audacious and heretical yes disrespectful okay no don't feel like this you're getting it feel free to ask any questions feel free to ask any questions okay but when you ask the question there are two ways of asking the same question right say deep inside oh he talked about 100% happiness you know how do you say 100% happiness possible and meanwhile you have irritation inside this question should not come from irritation it should come from the eagerness to learn he said that there's 100% happiness and how to how how can i know that what reasons are there how can i know that there should be ease in you not irritation we're getting it finally make sure that your ease keeps increasing not your irritation so this question coming from irritation is is that the, it has the, the it has the it has the what the it's a fabric of little fabric uh, fabric of the being sarcastic you're getting it so it doesn't help it harms you you are not open minded so you can ask questions how do you know buddha exists what's what's the problem right how do you know the buddha exists these are the questions which are being discussed in the monastic universities So feel free to ask any question. Don't restrain yourself from asking these questions. Are you good? So with this, that the what we need to learn. So I'm going to make several statements. I'm going to make several statements for us to create some skeleton of the next ten day program. A skeleton, and once the skeleton is done, this skeleton you don't have to believe in this. you don't need to believe just create the skeleton at least you have something to discuss and something to ask question on only if you heard somebody said that there's a buddha then you going how do you know there's a buddha if you never heard somebody saying that there's a buddha then you even this question would not strike your mind how do you know there is a buddha you're getting it you have to learn these things learn no need to accept no need to reject quickly okay so i'm going to make some statements <clears throat> one is that the happiness that we are seeking the misery which one which we want to shun these are all mental states you agree not agree and if you feel that okay i'm not too clear what he's saying i i heard what is what he said but i'm not too clear what he's saying right for example say anyone be very honest be very honest elders youngsters newcomers seniors okay seniors you have already have a very standard answer i know seniors been senior in your studies dharma studies okay i would say the younger older and the and then the the newcomers just express yourself okay let's say that the some people would go for the word ease rather than happiness happiness people relate this to pleasure and pleasure people see this as purely temporary purely sensual this is not really healthy instead they would go for they prefer the word ease some people would go for the word fulfillment there's a sense of fulfillment within there's a sense sense of ease within this ease disease this is is opposite of diseases is so people go for the word is fulfillment and many people for them is fine the word happy happiness is fine so whatever word you prefer go for it don't restrict you don't block yourself by one word you should go beyond the words to get to the meanings 
are the concepts. With this in mind, my question to you is, what do you mean by, for you, what does it mean by happiness? What does it mean by joy, ease, satisfaction, fulfillment? What do you mean by that? Raise hands, quick, 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 to save time. So that, why we are doing this is for us to know each other well. You're thinking well, and then others also will hear you. And because meanwhile, everybody, their thinking gets opened up. Yes. But to No. Uh, absence of misery now and forever. Okay, absence of misery. Misery is for now and forever. Very good. And one else? What does it mean by happiness to you? Yes, the girl here. Your name? Rina, yes. So just to uh, go beyond the uh, of duality. Of? Dualism. Dualistic. Okay, dualism. Okay, dualistic thinking. What do you mean by dualistic thinking? So, when we see things, we think he is edgy. So, we have two concepts about that. So, if we just, uh, I don't know, if we go beyond that, I mean, see things as they are. Uh, so, after that state, after seeing that state, what we get, that is happiness for you. Okay, good. Okay, so the, um, as Rina said, feel free to express your thoughts. You're getting it? And what you're expressing sometimes, and the um, people may not be happy with that. It doesn't matter. Express your thoughts. You're getting it? And then meanwhile, we learn, say, the, to express what's in your mind fully. It also requires a a great skill and talent. And even this talent can be learned. Anyone else? Quick. Quick. Okay. The question is, what does it mean by happiness or ease or fulfillment that you are seeking? Okay, the gentleman up there. Not thinking about the future and the past. Right? Okay, are you preparing for UPSC? You're preparing? Okay. So don't think about UBSC. <laughs> right? Don't prepare for UBSC. <laughs> be the present moment. Right? Okay. Be the present moment. Okay. Right? Okay. Dr. La. To achieve what do you want? What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> like what? If you... If you if you have to the, say the put them in the okay to to, to be trained in the Buddhist philosophy why <laughs> what is happiness to to attain what I want what do you want I want to train in Buddhist philosophy why do you want to train this for happiness what is happiness you know it's circular right okay so the doctor is confusing us because we, he she puts in the circular and we keep moving and she'll do her own work. <laughs> right, so we will in that circle. Okay, anyone else? Quick, anyone? Yes. Wanted to see other people happy. Why? Okay, look. Say, when I ask this question, it doesn't mean that I disagree with them. You're getting it. So these questions are actually we are, we have to learn how to ask these questions to yourself, to others as well. So that your thoughts will become clearer, clearer, and clearer. Okay. Then she will tell me why do we why why do we need to help others for your happiness? Why is that happiness? Why? Okay. So so why the saying that not seeing suffering in others? Why the, the why do you want that? That makes you happy. Good. Anyone else? Yes, Jigmila. Okay, to understand what's the reality. Then why you why do you have to why you have to understand the reality? Okay, what kind of emotions other people have, you have, you know the reality, then what? <laughs> Then you will be 
fees. So if some other like happy, so they are also spending something else. So then okay, so just see if what Jamil is saying, if I get you correctly. You get what he's saying. He said, if I know you so well, then the if you have the capacity to contribute ten percent, if you know if I know you so well, I would not expect more than ten percent from you. If I expect more than ten percent from you, it will give a disaster in me. Because you have a capacity only for ten percent, and I'm expecting eighty percent from you, and seventy percent lap is there, and I'll feel it'll disturb me. So it doesn't give me happiness. So only if I know you so well, know what is your level of thinking you know so well, then I will not expect beyond your capacity. Then I'll be happy. Is what I'm saying? No, sir. <laughs> so once you understand. Uh... Okay, let us all listen. Now you are all going to be, you know, these uh, my witness to what you are saying. <laughs> Once you understand the things surrounding by you, yes. then like uh, you will be like more happier than before. Why? Why? Because you know the things uh, surrounded by you, the people surrounded by you. If you know the people around you so well. Not only the knowing, just uh, by yourself, understanding uh, that some humans are suffering, things are like not real, then you will be like more satisfied. How? <laughs> so not only you know that oh, this person, this person, but also you know that they are suffering. If you know, I'm suffering, you are suffering, everybody is suffering. If you really want to be happy, happy, you should like, understand the things properly. So how understanding things help you to be happy? Okay. <laughs> Okay, so now look, we are skilling, we are learning other skills. You are getting it? One, how the doctor did, put you in a loop so that you'll keep going and then you can do something else. And his style, the Jimena style, is to say that there are so many steps there, right? We, I cannot explain fully in this session. Okay. Yes, we have to study more. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, the, the boy over there, yes. Eradication of ignorance. Better understand the ignorance. So how does it make you happy? If uh, I'm aware of the things, like uh, this is going right or this is wrong, and this, all things are not affecting me. Okay, this is going back to good, I'm not affecting. Things is going bad, I'm also not affecting. That situation is neutral, and that is also we can consider as a happy. What's your name? Okay, oh, yeah, I've been let's say that. Okay, Abhinash, I'm happy, that's okay. I'm not happy, that's okay. Right? So you're not okay, it's also happy. No, no, this is what I'm saying. If you know that, okay, I'm happy, that's okay. I'm not happy, that's okay. Right? This is your, what are you saying? So what I'm saying, what is happiness to you? So not happiness also happens for you. Is this? Not happiness, also happiness for me. This is my question to you. Is this yes or no? Abhinash, yes. Yes, no. Yeah, that's also for happiness. So that is happiness as well as non happiness. Both. No, the fact that you are unhappy means you are affected. So you said that so nothing cannot aff not affect you. <laughs> yeah, amazing, you are not affected by anything, I say. <laughs> right? <laughs> I try to point to the contradiction, you are not affected. I appreciate it, you are not affected. That's amazing. You live by your principle, that's amazing. Abhinash. Thank you, that's amazing, amazing example. Okay, anyone else? Okay, the girl over there. Oh, when everything works out for you, okay. That's amazing. Why? Why everything works out for me, for you, you are happy? Like what? So exam, how much you have to score to make you say that, to say that, it, oh, it works well? 90%. Okay, 90% makes you happy? Okay, you are all judge. You are my witness. 90%, right? And all the other students scored 96 you are 90. 
happy not happy be very honest are you sure and your teacher says that 95 is cut off <laughs> you're not happy <laughs> okay okay so even the external is not 100% happy right okay anyone else here kunjo children for me happiness is like uh, if i'm able to help my parents and uh, like uh, if i follow the uh, teachings of buddha and dalai lama and later i uh, like am i able to help others like uh, in tibetan we say sange kiten bala jatko fies chana this is actually happiness okay chitrana is saying that if i'm able to follow the teachings of buddha his sonas the dalai lama and to be service to the buddha dharma and the sentient beings that is happiness why because like uh, uh like i am a nun so uh in my experience i feel like uh, it is very really important to know the teachings of buddha and why why do you know the teachings of buddha why No it doesn't mean the, I'm not challenging you're getting it I'm also for the buddhist teachings <laughs> but the question why why do you have to follow the teachings of buddha not otherwise why should we do, do follow the buddhist teachings uh because of buddhist teaching uh, I can improve like uh, <laughs> I can explain in english sorry yeah then you can say in tibetan uh you see sangye ki uh Uh, sure. 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 Okay. So saying that the if I practice the Buddhist teachings then my decision that I've taken to become a nun or to be service to sentient beings they'll become very decisive. Right? Okay, very good. Over there Question of my ultimate goal is to be liberated from the sensational circle. Okay. So the uh your name Tenzin Shinzum. Tenzin Shinzum is saying that the ultimate goal is to be okay so, samsara enough. I'm tired samsara. Now put a stop to this, right? That's my ultimate goal. Right? You're tired? That's amazing. Actually we all should be tired. we all should be tired of samsara is very yes is very scary if you're not tired we live in the what is known as ignorance is bliss you're getting it we are living in the ignorance is bliss if you are not tired actually as the chunzumla said the reality is that if you know the reality is jimila said you to know the reality you'll see that it's very very scary enough is enough you're getting it Okay. Okay, here this girl. Then is the Dela. So maybe this is the Dela is the youngest one here. Okay, how old are you? 19, 18, 19, 19. Anyone 18, 19 or below anyone? 19 or below? Ah. Uh, how old? 19. 19. Okay, two. There are two young ones. Yes. not to have fear okay that the if the fear stops i'll be happy all right okay did you all hear did you all hear what this girl said to stop the fears makes me happy okay okay um so we will do the class till 11 actually because today we have nothing to discuss in the group discussion All right just to look at yourself look at each other smile away from right okay so we'll do till 10 and then half an hour just identify yourself in your group groups groups all split or not split jirji not split okay um any new hands coming up yet yeah, this pinzola yeah this is uh, for me happiness is to gain a proper understanding of the law of nature uh so that you know uh i can reduce the obstacles in my life as much as possible okay to understand the law of nature and thereby reduce the 
obstacles in your life as much as possible. Very good. Very good. Okay, the, the man over there, your name? Ravi, yes, Ravi, tell me. Okay, Ravi is saying self-awareness and self-control, self right? Okay, the question is, self-awareness is okay, right? But why should you control yourself? Don't control. What's the problem? Why, why do you have to control ourselves? Okay, I'm not challenging. You're getting it? It doesn't mean that this is wrong, right? It doesn't mean, yeah, we just see, explore how much Ravi can go and then how much we agree or disagree with Ravi. Yes. Sir, I think, um, I know control, uh, controlling word maybe uh, is a pessimistic word, but uh, I think that control is a pessimistic word. It doesn't matter, you can change the word. But the, the question is, why do we have to control? Uh, if we like to say what we like to say, I think 99% of it uh, uh, will get offended. So what's the problem if others people are offended? What's the problem? Okay, listen, listen. This is a very important point, right? What's the problem if other people are offended? Take care of yourself. As long as you're happy, you know, Trump, what he's doing? He offends people. It doesn't matter. As long as I'm happy, I'm rich. Fine, what's the problem? Why are you worried about people being offended? Because I think in order to function, in need to the practical life, so you when you actor you become more unhappy you are not in favor no, then there was the point. It, this look, right? In a way, what he's saying is that don't study philosophy like this. <laughs> you put wrong belief on what he's saying. Okay. Any okay, Tenzinla. Huh? Oh. Absence of ignorance is happy. Why? Ignorance is bliss. <laughs> What's the problem with the attachment, anger, and so forth? Huh? It brings up, are you sure? Okay, that makes sense. Okay, ignorance leads to the other afflictions like attachment, anger, jealousy, and so forth. When you have these, they don't give you peace of mind. They disrupt your peace of mind. Okay, it makes sense. But people, feel free to ask questions to this girl. Okay, there's one gentleman. But then, uh, I can't really know exactly the city after, but being free is the only direction I find logically seeking. Ah, uh, to be free. Okay, to be free. Okay. What's the problem if you're not free? If I'm not free, I'm always afflicted by a wrong view or by grasping for state. What do you mean by free? Uh, free. Because, say, for example, say you can, you are free to move around, it's also one level of freedom. As far as choice exists, choice with respect to your mental choices that you make, you're free to make any choice that is good, free to be angry. Um, I'm free of being angry, I can choose to which means that you there's no choice in you, you should be away from angry. <laughs> I'm saying I, I can sense anger coming up. Yes. Decide, have the choice, if I want to act on it or not. If you choose to go for, become angry? I mean, I don't see any reason why I would choose so, but... Many people, they do that. 
Nobody forced them to become angry. You know, they deliberately become angry, right? They choose to become angry. And if you say, don't be angry, what? What no anger, right? What not angry, right? Why not, <laughs> right? Look at the tone of these people. Is it this, this they find as a freedom. So, it's fine? Is it freedom or not? Why not? Because if you say they have no, they, they have no anger, then the other person say you are restricting me from the freedom to express anger. For me, when I'm angry, angry is like the antithesis to being free. I can only see the world in a one-minded way, and I'm not free to see it in many other perspectives. So the person may say, "I want to see only one way," right? And you are stopping me from my freedom to look at things from only one way. So, okay. So in a way, all these question answers. Learn how to ask these questions. You get it. it doesn't mean that you, when you ask these questions, it doesn't mean that you disagree with the other person. You may be fully resonating with the other person said. For example, when, what's your name? When Staff said that the, to be free, this amazing concept. But what does it mean by free according to Staff? You have to check it. You're getting it? Simply because that this amazing concept doesn't mean that how you understand it and how he understands are in the same page. We don't know. We have to check it by asking more questions. You're getting it? Okay, good. So, on the all these questions we have to ask. Don't stop yourself from asking these questions. Having said this, another statement that I that I like to make is that we all have the capacity for the hundred percent happiness. This is a statement. Statement doesn't mean that you have to accept it. You're getting it? Just keep it there with you and then see it makes sense to you over time. Everybody has the capacity to experience 100% happiness. Everybody has the capacity to experience 100% happiness. And what this young girl said, what she said, is that be free from fears. Everybody has the, the capacity to be 100% freed from suffering. 100% freed from um, fear. Number one, to be free from fear and to have the maximum happiness. I'm making two statements. One is, everybody has the capacity to get rid of the, the fears, to make the fear zero. Number two, everybody's capacity to experience maximum happiness. Ultimate happiness, 100% happiness. I'm, I'm making these two statements. Now the next question is, you have to ask questions. You have to ask questions. What is meant by fear? What is meant by happiness? How can we attain, how can we attain the state of total fearlessness and total internet happiness? Now in a loose sense, in a loose sense, I'm making the statements, I'm building the skeleton. A skeleton. I say, if there's a choice, if there's a choice for us to get away from the fears. By the way, how many are excited by fears? How many are excited by fears? Sometimes, you know, I'm really, I'm excited. Today I'm going to have a fear. I'm looking forward to it. Raise hands. Okay, the boy over there, what's your name? Yes. Abhishek, okay. Identify Abhishek and, you know, create fear on him. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? It's possible to record what he said. So there is a proof in the court. <laughs> right? Okay. So what I'm saying is that nobody wants fear. And who's that? The boys or the girls? <coughs> Both. Everybody. How many agree with Drishti? Everybody, boys, non-boys, girls, non-girls, everybody wants to be the free from the fears. Okay, number one is that we are seeking is fearlessness. The fearlessness is what we are seeking. And this in a Buddhist context or in a Buddhist terminology, in the Buddhist parlance, concept is the concept is fearlessness. And the in the Buddhist concept, the word given is nirvana. Word given is nirvana. So, say if somebody is already the Buddhist, then you can say we are all seeking nirvana. 
But if the person is not Buddhist, if you say we are seeking Nirvana, they say, no, I don't, I'm not seeking Nirvana. This is your Buddhist concept. The reality is what? A fearlessness. You're getting it? So when you speak in a context, they say, it is not necessary to, for you to speak in the Buddhist terminology. Because your job, Buddha came not to help the Buddhists. Buddha came to help all sentient beings, just like Jesus Christ. He came to help all the sentient beings, not only the Christians. You're getting it? To help everybody. So they say, they, we need to learn how to, to, how to speak in secular terms. We are all seeking fearlessness, number one. So in the Buddhist context, if you read the sophisticated Buddhist text, you will find the word, Nirvana. This is one thing that we need to remember. Then the next is that we are we all the, okay. How many we are the we are seeking the say if possible, if possible, infinite happiness. How many we are seeking with hands? And who's that? Boys, girls, boys, non-boys, girls, non-girls. Again, everyone, everybody wants is it across the religion. There's no difference in terms of what religion that you, you believe in. So everybody seeks infinite happiness. That infinite happiness, in technical terms, it is referred to as Buddhahood. Buddhahood. Buddhahood doesn't mean Buddhism. You're getting it? Buddha is a Sanskrit word. And the, the meaning is awakened state. Awakened state. Buddhahood is the fully awakened state. So we're all seeking these two things. So, in short, in short, if you ask, if you ask people, so what's, what, are you, what are you seeking? From different religions, from the different gender, you ask this question, people come with different, different, different answers. For example, I remember, I still vividly remember 2003, when I was in Cambridge, they used to meet with many professors, particularly phys the physicists. I meet with the physicists, and there was one physicist, and the, the who is very difficult to talk to, very complicated. You say something, and then the person the, he's so bright that he can see just internal contradictions right away. He will say, "What are you saying?" Is there's internal contradiction, and you cannot utter. You don't dare to utter the next word because again he will say you have contradiction. You're getting it. So the once two of us we we ended up into some kind of the debate. On the okay, so I'm not going to go into too much into that debate, and then the the it was we were at the invitation of our common friend, common friend, and his family to celebrate the the birthday of the, one of the family members there, and both of us were there, and two of us instead of celebrating, we entered up into physics debate. And then it was already 12 midnight, 12 a.m. still. And then the, all the guests, they all left. And the host became so desperate, said that two of you want to continue the debate, you can do it later on. Uh, for the time being, please leave. <laughs> right? So both of us are to left. We, we left. And then he, he was still not happy. He was still not happy. He said, Dorji, next weekend, I will invite you. Next, not weekend. Yes, weekend, Sunday. I'll invite you to my house for a meal and let's continue the debate. <laughs> right? So he invited me. So there, I was a little tired of the debate going hours and hours. And we were on the, the dining table for the meal. And then the, he started by continuing the debate. And his wife was there. And his wife very honestly said that, I don't know what two of you are debating. For me, I don't care about these debates. What I want is I want enough money so that I can lead a very comfortable life. So for her, the happiness is to have enough money so that she can have a comfortable life. And this professor needs debate for him to be happy. <laughs> You're getting it? So people have different, different, different understanding. Or the means, finally, in debate makes him happy. And the, the wife, the enough money gives her happiness. So the point is that not all wives, right? <laughs> the wife of this professor, right? For example, the Dr. Nivedanaji, she doesn't care about money. 
She only cares about people growing. Right? She wants to see people growing in their compassion. That's amazing. So kind. So this is her joy. This is her happiness. Okay, what I'm saying is that we're all seeking fearlessness and infinite happiness. And yet, we also have the potential to attain these two things. You're getting it? That potential that we have, that we have is known as Buddha nature. Buddha doesn't mean Buddhism. Again, remember this. Buddha means awakened state, awakening, awakening, awakening. And we all have this. But you, the Buddha did not come on the planet Earth and say the okay, Buddha nature. No. He discovered it. He discovered it. And the Buddha nature existed way before the Buddha came on the planet Earth. Don't forget it. The seed of awakening, seed of perfection, which exists within each one of us, existed as true way before the Buddha Shakyamuni came on the planet Earth. Say, if you go, if you, if you go back, in time, 0.3 million years ago, the Homo sapien came on this planet Earth. Homo sapiens, human beings. It existed at that time. And before that, like 200 million years ago, 300 million years ago, 500 million years ago, the dinosaurs existed on planet Earth. They also had the Buddha nature, seed of the Buddha nature. Buddha was yet to be born. Many, many, many year, million years later, the Buddha was to be born. And then before that, what? Four billion years ago, unicellular organisms, our first ancestor on the planet Earth, our first ancestor, unicellular organism, even that has the Buddha nature. And the way, where is the Buddha? Buddha Shakyamuni, where? May, 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 million, billion years later to come for him to come into existence. He discovered, he did not invent, he did not create. These are the realities that we are, we are endowed with. What? The potential for? fearlessness and infinite happiness. Okay, before I go any further, my question to you is that, say, there is a diamond shop. This is a diamond shop. The diamond, what is that? Showroom. And they say, in diamond showroom, you see one solid diamond, one kg diamond displayed. So beautifully displayed. And there's another one kg diamond in the ditch. Very dirty. Right? Which is more expensive? One in the showroom? Huh? Huh? Okay, oh, raise hands. Huh? It went on? Carrot. Carrot, is it not with the gold? 24 gold? 24 carrot? Okay, same quality. Same quality, but one is in showroom and one is the ditch. How many would say that, okay, the one in the showroom is more, more expensive, raise hands? Okay, one in the, 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 the oh, there's no difference, raise hands? Okay. One, those, those who said one in the showroom, one showroom is more expensive, then the showroom person, salesperson, what he or she will do is pick up the one from the ditch, clean this up, put some perfume, and put it in the showroom. It becomes a show. The, it becomes a showroom diamond. So now again you say, wow, right? Okay, same diamond, but it's the same. There's no difference. Okay, so the Buddha Shakyamuni, his diamond is like the diamond in the showroom. We all have the diamond. Buddhas have the diamond. Lord Ram, Prophet Muhammad, Lord Mahavir, Guru Nanak, and Jesus Christ, and Adi Shankara, and what is that? The hey, Hindu Islam, Judaism. Moses, Abraham, and not, okay, oh, he's saying the names of all the big ones. We, each one of us, we have the diamond also. And our diamond is like the diamond in the ditch. The Buddha's diamond is diamond in the showroom. You're getting, there's no difference. So, smart people will do what? Pick up the diamond from the ditch, 
Clean this up, put some perfume and put it in the showroom. It becomes a showroom diamond. You're gonna, we all become Buddha. We all become enlightened beings. So we all have that capacity. You're getting it? It's not that, oh, in my class, that, that boy is so smart, that girl is so smart. I'm just average. I'm below average. You have to believe in your diamond. But when I say belief, it's not just a blind belief. You have to study the text, which is in, including this, what is that? Dharma Dhadu Stava, in praise of Dharma Dhadu. That explains how we all have this on the diamond, the Buddha nature. This diamond has broadly, it has innumerable qualities, and two of which, number one, is the fearlessness. We have the capacity to experience total fearlessness. We have the capacity to experience infinite happiness. We all have this, the, these seeds within us. And these seeds needs to be, need to be activated. You're getting it? Okay. So the process of activating these seeds, this, this, this process of activating these seeds is known as spirituality. And people believe in different, different, different spirituality. What actually helps you to retrieve these seeds, that is the genuine of the, what do you call it? I say, a wholesome spirituality, and which doesn't really help you to retrieve this. This is like what is a neutral spirituality, or some kind of can be destructive, unwholesome spirituality. So, the point is that we all have that capacity for the nature. Okay, so we will be leave here for a tea break, and the meanwhile, as you will first identify the groups. Once it is done, quickly go to have the grab a cup of tea yourself and then meet your group members and introduce yourself and then from this afternoon we'll have the proper group discussion yes okay so teaching at the from 3 30 to 3 30 to 5 and then the um group this group discussion is Group discussion from 4.30 to 5.30. Okay, I would say that the this afternoon, those who like to come for the, the this the Nalanda Diploma Course Batch 5 studies, you can come. It's from 3.30 to 5. So which means that we don't really get time for the group discussion. Uh, 5, then 5.30. Oh, we still have time. So at five, then they say today you can introduce yourself and then they say bring some of these questions up from five to six. Still we have one hour. Okay. I will recite the Heart Sutra Mantra. <coughs> now page twenty page thirty one, I think. Page thirty one. And those for those of us who do not know this mantra, page thirty one. Deyata om gati gati Paragati Parasam gati bodhi swaha Deyata om gati gati Parasam gate bodhi swaha tiyata om gate gate paragate parasam gate bodhi swaha Okay, three prostrations together. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> 